Fight Journal Podcast, Episode 2. Shout out to Yo Kratom for sponsoring this and uh, being a sponsor of really all the things that we do here at Gas Digital and in the world of Legion of Skanks. Yo Kratom is king. Home at 6 dollars kilo. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, this week I decided I'm going to do my Fight Journal Podcast more like a journal. I'm by myself. Um, right now I'm in my car on my way to uh, North Bergen. New Jersey State of Fitness Boxing to meet up with my boxing coach, and um, yeah, I'm going to get a little bit of work in today. I figure this week I will do maybe like a little bit of a daily podcast fucking blog, just to give you some updates, let you guys know where I'm at, if you guys give a fuck, um, if you guys do know I'm, I'm doing this podcast just because some people want to hear about it, some people don't, so this is it. If you guys want to hear about the fight training and what's going on leading up to Skankfest, uh, this is your place, because I won't be talking about it as much on Legion of Skanks, a real-ass podcast, trying to, uh, you know, compartmentalize these things. Some people care, some people don't, so if you care, you're here. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm very, very, uh, I feel good. Uh, I sparred yesterday. Um, for the first time since I had that annoying rib injury, um, I have no pain at all. I have no limit, limitations on mobility. It, it was um, a pretty minor injury in retrospect. Um, but you just don't know how long. I don't know if I, if I have like this crazy pain tolerance and I'm going, oh, it doesn't feel that bad. You hear it could take three months to heal. Shit like that was getting in my head. I was trying to, like, save face because, you know, obviously I want to do this fight. But it was, like, fucking with me. Like, if my rib still felt the way it did day one, it would be, we'd be having some difficulty training. We really would be. But luckily, it's better. Um, I literally don't feel any pain at all. Um, no, no limitation on mobility. Um, so I'm good to go. I sparred yesterday. I felt good. I did um, five three-minute rounds. Um, well, I did I did four on, one off, one on. Um, so I feel even right now my cardio. We're nine weeks out. My cardio is really, really good. Um, you know, and and I think where it's going to need to be unquestionably when we come to to the actual fight time. Um, you know, updates on the team. I think we're going to have Harrington fight fucking Alex Stein. Um, Alex Stein is, uh, I would say, uh, he's definitely a, com- a comedian and uh, I don't want to say political commentator because I don't know exactly how serious I take his political commentary. I don't really watch his shit like that. I've just watched his sort of stunts and I, um, from afar I have, um, you know, enjoyed some of the things that he's done. So he stepped up and said he wants to fight Harrington and he does bring a lot of eyes and attention. Um, so I think it could be a fun way to sell a few more pay-per-views and get people watching the actual fights, which would be fun because we are, it looks like we are doing pay-per-views. We had a great meeting with Mint Comedy yesterday, so you guys should be able to uh, enjoy the, the pay-per-view and watch this live from home, even if you're not going to be there, even though you guys can still get Sunday tickets for Skankfest. Go, go to skankfest.com, grab your Sunday tickets, Sunday pass. That's when me and Tim Butter are fighting. So, um yeah, and also it's going to be cheaper this year. We had a great meeting about lowering the price, lowering the production cost, so we can bring this to uh, a lot more people for a lot more of an affordable price. So look out for more information on that. But uh, yeah, it looks like looks like we're going to book Harrington versus Stein if they want to make that happen. So um, I mean, that's probably going to be it for. You know, people in the gas digital and, and comedian, gas digital universe and comedians boxing, um, but maybe some more fan fights, things like that. I know a bunch of people have submitted, so that's going to probably happen as well. And yeah, that's where we're at, baby boys. Feel good. I do enjoy boxing. Boxing is a fun. It's a really fun activity. I do feel like a fraud because I was doing jujitsu for so long. And there's just something about the jujitsu mentality when you do, I mean, I did it for years, um, pretty regularly and you just, whatever it is, I just feel like jujitsu is a superior martial art and I feel like, um, yeah, 
when when I'm boxing, it feels more like exercise. It doesn't feel as much like self-defense. Like, and I know it is, like, for sure, unquestionably. Like, you start a fight standing up and you punch each other in the face. And, um, but when it comes to self-defense and it comes to, like, protecting myself, doing jiu-jitsu felt like I was sharpening a fucking axe that I always had in my hand. And, um, you know, boxing feels like exactly what it is. It feels like I am... I'm getting better at moving out of the way of punches and I'm getting better at punching. And that is fucking great. And it's awesome. And it's really fun and it's cool. And it's, 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 it's super fun, dude. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying the same, like the way I connected with jujitsu, like my son takes jujitsu. He's doing his first tournament this month coming up. Um, you know, something that I can share with him. I can teach him as I learn, but you know, it was, it was just definitely a different thing. I, I don't, I, I embrace the jujitsu culture more than the boxing culture. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I'll continue to box, um, to stay in shape, you know, obviously, um, while I guess it's the, it's the next best thing that I can do in order to stay in shape and motivate. And, but the reality is that I want to fucking roll. I want to go back to jujitsu. I really do. And my knees are both feeling better. My right knee still clicks. I still got to figure that out. But my left knee, I have no pain in it at all. Now that I've taken a decent amount of time off, um, which I think that's what I needed to do. I didn't need to jump right back into jujitsu three weeks after I got surgery. That was fucking stupid. Um, so yeah, let me, let me let my body heal. I really want to go back, but I'm fucking torn. I'm legitimately torn because, um, both physically and mentally, because I know that that's what happened to my knees. And as I'm getting older, like, you know, I, you saw just what happened to my rib just by fucking around with the dude after a show, I fucking fucked up my rib. I've torn my shoulders. I've popped ribs, my fingers, um, we're all jammed up and fucked up. My feet are in constant pain. Both of my knees are fucked. Um, you know, I, I don't have any back pain, but I know that's probably coming. So jujitsu, and this is the, the common thing. You, you hear this from people that do jujitsu. It is, um, it is fucking grueling on the body. And I don't think there's any escaping that if you want a live role. And if you want to, and that's really what makes jujitsu beautiful. What makes it like an incredible martial art and it makes it really practical is the fact that at the end of every class, you fucking look at another dude, your size, your rank or whatever. Maybe you're a guy higher than you, whatever. And you go and you live roll and you really fucking fight each other and you really put it to, to the test within certain limitations. But yeah, a lot of people really fucking roll and they really go hard. I did. And that's why it's better than the other martial arts. You can't really spar full steam. I mean, we, we go pretty hard sometimes in sparring, but you can't do that with any regularity. You'll fucking get brain damage. You know, you can't really do that four or five days a week. And in jujitsu, you get to do that. You get to test yourself. You get to see in a very practical, real way, exactly how good you are. Um, but that also puts your body through a lot, dude. I, I mean, look, I've, I've pinched nerves just lifting weights, just standing in the wrong position. I, I fucking... I bend over and I pinch a nerve in my back. So imagine there's another person twisting and pulling and pushing and trying to trick you and trap you. And, and they're, they're doing everything they can do to fucking choke you out or, or grab one of your limbs and twist it to the point where they break it or you tap. And that's in, in a very real way. I mean, what it does to your body, it makes it very strong and it makes it very tough. But it also fucking, it really beats it up in a very, very real way. So that's why I'm torn. Do I want to go back and continue to deteriorate my body? And now that I'm feeling a little bit better, you know, now that my knees are feeling better, now that I'm moving around and I, I feel good, dude. I'm 41 years old, but I feel really good. So do I want to go and do that to myself? The answer is yes, I do. I really do. I want to go back to jujitsu. I really love it. I wanted to get my purple belt, dude. Oh, I want to get my fucking purple belt. I, it's so fucking gay to say but I really fucking cared about it. I really cared about fucking, it was just the first thing that I ever did with any sort of regularity, physically testing myself, pushing myself. It's not that I was good at jujitsu, 
but I was pretty good. I mean, I was uh, I was one of the better guys in the class um, of the blue belts of the the guys that were at my rank. Like I, I did, I always did very well. I would always give purple belts a lot of problems, uh, and it was just something that like I don't know, dude. I didn't fucking play baseball or football or any of these things like beyond like t-ball, beyond like doing it for like a year in middle school or, or elementary school. I just never did. I never excelled at any sports. And getting my, just the, I remember getting the first stripe on my white belt. I was like, this is fucking, you know, this is really cool. This is really cool. This is really like, I just felt like, wow, dude, I actually did something. It wasn't like bullshit. It didn't feel like bullshit. I was like, oh, no, no, I've been coming and I've been learning and I am better. And I, this is a, a real legitimate ranking. And then you sort of work your way up. But then I'm like, you know, you got your, 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 a higher ranked white belt and you start to beat blue belts and you're like, Oh shit, dude. Like I'm actually tapping out blue belts. Now I'm giving these guys problems. I'm, I'm not losing these positions. And you, you go like, Oh shit, I'm legitimately ready to get a blue belt. It's very real. You're it's, it's, it is, it's not like somebody looks at you and goes, Oh, well now I think that's a, you know, you, you did this movement and that test was, it's like, no, no, no. It's like you, you go against other guys and you fucking slowly but surely just grind your way up. There's no shortcut. There's no faking it. It reminds me of stand-up comedy. Being funny and being a stand-up comedy, you you got to just fucking grind. You got to put in the mat time and you got to just fuck or, you know, stage time, mat time. Haha. Uh, you got to put in the, the, the stage time. Um, but as it relates to mat time, right? The, the analogy is there. Um and you get better based off of just the grind. And and there's no bullshit. There's no hiding it. You're naked. You're in front of an audience. You're naked. You're in front of your coach and your class. You you know, it is. And I, I just really connected with that. And I, I feel like with boxing, it's not the same sort of like what like I, even the way I'm, I'm talking about jujitsu in a very passionate way. Right, now, I don't talk about boxing that way. It was a huge fight. Crawford versus Spence. This is the same time as UFC. I watched the UFC. I watched the highlights of Crawford Spence. I don't love watching boxing like that, right? I like fighting. I like the, the idea of like combat sports and martial arts and then going in there and, you know, trying to hurt another guy while he tries to hurt me. That's a fucking cool thing to me. I really dig that. And boxing is a part of that. And that's why I can get into this. And I'm extremely motivated. I'm, I'm really loving the training and loving doing it. But if I'm being just completely honest, I miss jujitsu in uh, just such a massive way, and and I wish it could be in my life right now, and I wish I could be training, but I can't. All right, I am pulling up to my gym right now. I'm going to take a break. This wasn't supposed to be this long. I was going to do like five minutes a day throughout the week. I don't even know how long this is. Um, this is 13 minutes. All right, yeah, I mean, look, it's not that long. Um, I'll come back maybe tomorrow. And uh, chat a little bit more, let you guys know how it's going. But things are going well. Just wanted to chime in with a little bit of Fight Journal. All right, I'm back. It is Thursday, August 2nd. I believe it's August 2nd. No, Thursday, August 3rd. <clears throat> Thursday, August 3rd, I am on my way to State of Fitness Boxing in North Bergen, New Jersey, uh, to go get another session in with my coach, Lenny. Um, we've really just been doing pad work. We've really just been doing, um, you know, heavy bag work, shadow boxing. It's a lot, a little fixing of my form. Um, I never worked with a traditional boxing coach before. So there's little tiny things that make a, a massive, massive difference. You know, everything from, you know, sort of loosening up and just sort of like, you know, not being so tight and making my movement a little bit more fluid, um, to just like little tiny, tiny things and tiny little fixes with form, footwork, position of my head. Like there's a lot that goes into that, that, um, if you've trained the way that I've trained, which has been like, you know, with MMA coaches, you know, never really super hyper-focused on boxing or striking or it's sort of always been like MMA training, a little bit of Muay Thai, um, but it's a lot of bad habits that you develop, especially when you're talking about um, actual, you know, actual boxing with people who really know the sport of boxing. Um, so that's sort of what's been going on for the past few weeks 
I've, I've done probably six or seven sessions with him, um, and we're starting sparring on Tuesday. I've been sparring, obviously, with, you know, Team Rattlesnake and Diego's, but that's not the real sparring. That's like we're fucking around. And don't, I shouldn't say that because Paco's gotten pretty good. Diego's really good. I spar with Diego. So we get some good rounds in. Um, but I'm genuinely curious to see where I'm going to, um, you know, where I'm going to land with traditional boxers, guys who have much more boxing experience than me. Um, yeah, so we're going to see this is Tuesday. They're, they have me coming in at 7 o'clock in the morning, which is fucking, oh. Oh, my God. I'm dreading it. But I'm not really dreading it. I shouldn't say that because I, I, I used to – it's always been a goal of mine to get up that early and work out. And I've never been able to do that in my life. Right now, it's 9.30 in the morning. I have a 10 o'clock session right now. 10, 11, 12 o'clock, that's right when I start to really feel motivated and I feel fresh. And my body starts feeling loose. So that's typically when I work out. But I've always wanted to get up at 7 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning – go to the gym, get a work. There was always jujitsu classes at like 6.30 in the morning that I wanted to make, and I was never able to get to them. I went on a run recently. I did a run at like 6.30 in the morning, and it was fucking great. It's just a great way to start your day. Doing some physical activity, but it's also not just physical, it's mental. You know, training your mind, training your body, just sort of starting off your day saying, I am bettering myself in a very real and tangible way. And I really wish that I was one of those guys that had the ability to do that every day because I think it would it would just it would just put me on the straight and narrow every day. Because honestly the only time that I really like think about like my life in any sort of like non-distracted way is when I'm exercising. If I'm on a run, that is like my most meditative state. When I'm running, I'm just fucking keyed in. I'm on my thoughts. I'll start thinking about the fight while I'm running. I'll start thinking about, you know, just whatever's going on in my life, right? It's always like, all right, I start thinking about the opponent, the date. I start thinking like, oh, is Tim Butterly training this hard? So I start running a little bit harder. So I'm pushing myself a little bit harder. Then after like five, 10 minutes of just sort of like being there, my mind just starts to go to other things. Things in my career, things about my future, my relationships, what I could be doing to better myself in other areas of life. And I just sort of, as I'm running and as I'm pushing myself, I'm just thinking about how I can be better. And I think a great way to, to a better way to do that would be to go through that whole meditative cycle every morning. I really want to do it. That's it. You know what? I'm going to fucking start doing it. I'm going to start getting up at like 6.30 in the morning and going on my run and getting my run that early out of the way because I really genuinely feel like that will be a great thing for me. Forget the fight, forget everything else, just for my own, you know, mental state and just trying to make my life better. I think it's a great way to do it. And I need to just listen to my own advice sometimes. And I think that's a great advice for myself. But either way, uh, going to start sparring on Tuesday. I will obviously on the next fight journal give you guys some insight as to how that went. A little update on the rib injury. I feel absolutely nothing anymore. Um, it's yeah, it's, it's completely gone. I don't even like if I dig my hand like deep into my rib, like really deep in there, I can find where the pain was. Um, but it's gone. I'm fine. I, I sparred on uh, Monday with Team Rattlesnake. Felt great. Um, and I've been, you know, really, really pushing myself, full rotation, full range of motion, no pain. So that was great. Uh, I'm really excited that that is behind me. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there's really not much else happening besides this. Uh, you know what I will say? I am excited. Uh, I shouldn't say excited. <laughs> my, my girlfriend is back in town. Um, she was on tour for a little more than a month, and then she came back for uh, a few weeks. But she's going back out on tour for a few months, and it is way easier to eat healthy, not drink, not skip training sessions when, when she's not around. I love her, and I want to have her around at all times, and I'm very sad about her leaving. But I will say just for, like, just the health purposes when she's not around. Like I can just, I can 
shut down. Like, I don't need to eat any good food. I can just eat some chicken breast or some turkey and have a protein shake here and there. I, I, I don't, when she's around, like, we want to go to nice dinners. We want to, like, just have a nice meal together, cook something. I, I haven't been drinking, but now that she's been back in town, I have been a little bit. Um, we had a bottle of wine last night. And tonight we're going to visit her parents, and her parents, you know, they, you know, they, they make, like, artisan cocktails, and they're really into, like, you know, their home bar. So, obviously, I'm going to have a couple drinks tonight, um, which doesn't, you know, really doesn't help my metabolism. But I'm on weight right now. I weigh 215 pounds right now. I don't need to kill myself. The, the agreed-upon weight is 205 pounds. Um, I don't need to kill myself. I'm going to make the weight with ease. Um, part of me wants to even be lighter than that, so I, I'm going to you know, be really strict about the diet <clears throat> leading up to it because I think me just being faster is only going to help me. I, I don't think I'm going to lose any power getting any lighter than that. Um, so... But yeah, her being in town does make it a little bit more difficult. She's leaving on Sunday. She's going to be gone for three full months. So I will have a lot of downtime to be super focused on just the training and, and just really getting in the best shape possible. I hear that Tim Butterly is training pretty fucking hard, which is great. It's good to hear. Um, but so am I. So am I. Right now, I'm boxing um, four days a week. I'm going to ramp that up to probably five days a week, running every day. Um, my boxing coach told me not to lift weights, and I'm really, I'm really torn on that. I, I guess there's like, um, you know, the thought processes that lifting weights will make you tight. You want to be loose and. Um, and I guess a lot of boxers don't lift weights, but then I, I go online, I do the research and there's a lot of professional boxers who do lift weights. They lift weights for explosivity. Um, you know, there's things that you can do that will increase your punching power, your core power, your endurance. So I think that the, I, I'm going to probably once a week, just do something, just do something, whether it's just like, um, you know, you know, explosive movement, um, squats, deadlifts, things for core power, things that will, um, you know, increase shoulder endurance, um, punching endurance. I mean, there's a, there's a lot online. So I think just once a week, just to, you know, tire myself out on the weekends and then get back into boxing on Mondays, I'll be nice and loose. I think that'll be good. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe that's a bad idea. But I also want to fucking look good, you know? Like, and I don't want to fucking, just, just not doing any weightlifting at all and any strength training at all, I'll start to look like, even like losing weight, I'll look like fucking flabby and soft. So, I want to fucking look good, want to feel good. That's another, you know, psychologically, if I feel really good and I look good, I don't think that that hurts going into a, a fight. Fucking, get some fucking abs popping, why not? Um, all right. I'm going to wrap this one up. This is going to be this week's episode of Fight Journal, episode two. Shout out to your creator for supporting the show. I'm about to pull up to uh, my boxing gym now. And, yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a little insight. I think I might keep the, the fight journals like this, just make it more of a journal, just me talking shit, letting you guys know where we're at, letting you know where the fight training is at, letting you know where the team's at, updates on everything. And, um, yeah, that's that. So thanks for tuning in. Check you next week.